For the past 200 years, the most efficient mode of freight transportation has been trains, and since the 1800s, not much has changed. More than two centuries since their invention, powerful locomotives pull steel-wheeled rail cars over steel rails, and aside from more efficient locomotive and rail car designs, the basic makeup of a freight train has remained much the same. In recent years, however, the industry has seen a surge in interest from tech startups aiming to modernize freight rail, and among these innovations are autonomous trains and rail cars. How did we get here, and is this really the future? Just a quick disclaimer before we begin. In this video, I talk about a handful of tech startups in the rail industry. I just want to preface everything by saying that I'm not an investor in any of these startups. I'm really just a rail fan, talking about what's going on in the rail industry. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump in. The late 90s and early 2000s, for better or for worse, saw the rise of independent tech startups trying to innovate in the transportation industry. While the rail industry remained relatively untouched, the landscape began to shift in the 2010s. With growing concerns about climate change, rail became a focal point for innovation. While most innovations focused on improving existing technology, such as lowering locomotive emissions and automating train operations, by the end of the decade, various startups set out to effectively reinvent rail freight logistics. In 2020, a group of former SpaceX engineers founded Parallel Systems envisioning it as a completely new era in rail freight. They set out to design battery electric autonomous wheel sets capable of carrying individual shipping containers over the rails. These cars were intended to increase shipping efficiency, being able to move both on their own and in multi-car platoons, in theory making them a solution for both last mile and long distance rail shipping. Additionally, when implemented in conjunction with micro terminals, they would be able to bring containers closer to their final destination and load and unload them faster, ultimately taking trucks off the road and avoiding the oftentimes lengthy process of container processing in traditional intermodal terminals. By 2022, after two years of development, Parallel Systems unveiled its prototype railcar to the public, attracting media attention not only from rail news outlets, but from multiple mainstream news sources. Along with the photos and videos of the prototype car in action, Parallel Systems announced that they were backed by $50 million in private investment making it clear that this project was going to continue to move forward. While some saw Parallel Systems as the future of freight transportation in the United States, many people, mostly those well versed in railroads, criticized this project for a myriad of reasons which I'll get to later. Nevertheless, all publicity is good publicity, as Parallel Systems soon received a $4.4 million federal grant to test these cars at the Transportation Technology Center in Colorado. Not long after, Union Pacific, the country's biggest freight railroad, expressed interest in the technology, stating that though it had some hurdles to overcome, they would be keeping an eye on it. Even more notably, in 2023, Genesee and Wyoming, a massive rail holdings company, announced its intentions to test these autonomous trains on two shortline railroads in Georgia. More on that later. Unfortunately for Parallel Systems, this is just about where the positives end. Since showing its prototype to the public in 2022, Parallel Systems has received endless criticism from railroads and rail fans alike. First off, autonomous trains have never operated on mainline rails in the United States. Yes, they do exist in a few places, but they're generally isolated rapid transit lines that are free of at-grade crossings and are relatively easy to automate. Mainline freight railroads are far less controlled. For example, at-grade crossings mean trains have to interact with cars on the roads, unprotected tracks can be obstructed and or damaged by natural disasters and debris, and in the case of small freight spurs, switches and other infrastructure are still manually controlled. Though these pod trains will feature accident avoidance systems and will be able to stop much faster than traditional trains, it'll not only be hard to get them approved for use on railroads, but it'll be hard to perfect their accident avoidance systems to the point where they can safely operate on their own. If self-driving cars, a far more refined technology is any sign of things, this is no small feat. Marking autonomous vehicles as traffic hazards. The group Safe Street Rebels is placing cones on Cruise and Waymo cars as a way to temporarily stop them. They want these cars off the road permanently. According to the group, using a traffic cone on top of the car disables it. In addition to this engineering conundrum, the basic design of these cars is questionable at best. The individual wheel set design means the structure of the car is entirely dependent on the shipping container, which is relatively crunchy compared to traditional rail equipment. This means that in any altercation between a parallel systems pod train and a traditional train, the pod train will be completely destroyed. These pod trains are also only capable of carrying one container, no double stacking, so even when compared to intermodal well cars, they're less efficient with space. That gets me to a few more points on how these cars lack efficiency. 
They are the aerodynamic equivalent of a brick, so unless these trains are running in 100 plus car platoons, mainline operations will be pretty inefficient. As of now, we still don't know how long these platoons can get, so if Parallel Systems has any intention of using these to replace mainline container trains, this could be an issue. Finally, the power source of these pods, battery electric, is not nearly as efficient as traditional overhead electrification. I've made this point countless times in videos, but the process of making lithium ion batteries is expensive and terrible for the environment. Also, I imagine that the process of replacing cells in thousands of individual wheel sets will be tedious and expensive in the long run. I just really don't see any context in which these will make sense for long distance shipping, and in the case of last mile or local deliveries, Spurs will need significant upgrades in order to make these work. As if that wasn't enough, in order to make railroads compatible with parallel systems, they'll have to build all new micro terminals for unloading and loading. Ultimately, parallel systems pod trains are inefficient, not that great for the environment, inconvenient, potentially dangerous, and will need significant regulatory changes before they can enter service. In September of 2023, Parallel Systems released a second generation prototype of its autonomous rail car and it improved on some of the drawbacks of the original design. First off, the concern of structural rigidity was for the most part eliminated when they switched from the independent wheel sets to a more flat car like design. In addition to this major change, its operating range was improved to 500 miles between charges and finally the train's platooning ability was demonstrated on a test track in Fillmore, California. Despite my many criticisms of Parallel Systems, I gotta say, this is pretty sick. Despite all of its drawbacks, rail companies, particularly Genesee and Wyoming, are still quite interested in the prospect of fully autonomous trains. Since late 2023, g has been trying to convince the Federal Railroad Administration to waive certain safety regulations in order to test these cars on the Georgia Central Railway and the heart of Georgia Railroad. As of right now, the FRA has acknowledged GNW's request and will be holding a public meeting on March 12, 2024. More meetings will likely follow this one, in addition to times when the FRA will be accepting public comments, and after that the FRA will make a decision on whether parallel systems can be tested. If they rule in their favor, the dream stays alive. If not, parallel systems will most likely be forced to either repurpose its design in some way, or more pessimistically close its doors. Until then, they forge on awaiting FRA approval. While Parallel Systems is clearly the most well-established player in the autonomous freight train game, there are a couple of other startups that are worth mentioning. In June of 2023, Houston-based startup Autonomous Intermodal LLC announced its intentions to design and manufacture an autonomous intermodal train set capable of carrying the same amount, if not more, containers than current double-stack trains. They plan to do this by building 4,000-foot intermodal train sets, or double-stack platforms as they call them, that can be connected to build 16,000 foot double stack trains. Though similar in concept to traditional intermodal well cars, Autonomous Intermodal's double stack platforms, or DSPs, will have a smaller gap between containers, reducing drag and also allowing for around 20% more containers per train. Additionally, the DSPs will feature more efficient braking systems, enhance container security, and will be lighter than current cars, ultimately making what they hope will be the next big step in rail intermodal technology. More importantly, Autonomous Intermodal wants to build Autonomous Traction Platforms, or ATPs, machines intended to replace traditional locomotives. These 9,000 horsepower machines will be fully autonomous and will be placed throughout trains to evenly distribute power. According to Autonomous Intermodal, the initial units may be diesel powered, but they will adapt to industry standards, creating zero emissions variants when needed. Being that this startup is less than a year old, its plans and renderings are still pretty basic at this point, and it has a long way to go before hitting the rails. Like parallel systems, these trains autonomous capabilities are subject to approval by the FRA, but what I like about this company is that if the government doesn't rule in favor of autonomous trains, Autonomous Intermodal LLC will be able to easily shift its focus towards redesigning the standard intermodal well car. Though I'm still not the biggest fan of autonomous freight trains, I think that this startup shows a good amount of promise thanks to its more achievable design. I could totally see railroads switching to these more efficient cars in the future. Autonomous Intermodal LLC is a startup that I could see becoming something the industry adopts, but a startup that seems a lot less realistic is Glide. Founded in 2022, this California startup is designing what they call the first autonomous road to rail solution. Their unique concept involves seamlessly transitioning from road to rail with a specialized vehicle aptly named a glider equipped with retractable steel wheels for rail operations. Unlike Autonomous Intermodal, it seems that Glide is going by the more traditional startup playbook with an attractive website featuring impressive renderings reminiscent of Tesla's Cybertruck. 
As seen here, gliders will attach to either end of a trailer to move it on the road, and in this picture you'll see that they'll use their retractable wheels to operate on train tracks. From this rendering, it appears that gliders will use the design based on the Hummer EV, but from other renderings, this resemblance is less evident. The glider prototype is said to be making its debut later this year, and when it does, it'll begin testing at the port of Woodland, Washington. Like parallel systems, I don't think the glide will ever be used on freight mainlines, but it could possibly have some niche uses in intermodal terminals. I guess that'll be seen when it begins testing in the near future. Ultimately, I question whether any of these startups will see any widespread success, but I do think that there could be a few niche applications for these technologies. Many of these startups see rail as an ancient technology that never changes, and for the most part that's true. Where the startups are wrong, however, is that the rail industry isn't resistant to change due to a lack of innovation, rather it's just been nearly perfected for more than 200 years. Unfortunately, in 2024, there's not that much that we can do to innovate further. Overhead electrified trains are still the most efficient form of land transportation, and it's been that way since the 1880s. Trying to Elon Muskify them will not change that. Still, money talks, and as long as these startups have investors and interest from railroads, they'll continue to exist. It'll certainly be interesting to see where they go, and if you want to follow along with these unique startups, make sure to subscribe because I'll be following along with all their developments in my Rail News series. With that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in another video.